Again, this clock mechanism, made in 1880, came through the around the horn, 1885, sits on a dock seven years. The architect talks to a jeweler, saying we need a clock. The jeweler somehow has connections with people and says, in correspondence, like they've written down, for $200 I can get you a deal on a clock. So he gets, cuts the deal. Then there was this maintenance contract, so he made a little off that too, apparently. And in the old days, the custodian would have come up every morning, gone up that rickety ladder that was replaced by this ladder, and they would raise a flag. At the end of the day, bring a flag down. So rain, snow, whatever. Sometime in the 20s, the disproportionately thick, tall flagpole broke off in a windstorm. And I bet the custodian was really glad to see that thing go. And so there's a small flagpole outside. Uh, once a week, the custodian would take this handle, slip it on the gear, crank the mechanism up, and that would bring the weight up and it would run the clock for eight days. And then sometime in the 20s, according to a clock expert guy, the electric motor was added, and so that solved the crank issue. Over the years, there have been a, a number of small things, but overall, the clock keeps doing its job. Next year, it will be have been in this building 100 years. So for 134 years, still doing a good job. Um, mostly it's the bronze gears that fatigued over time, and those were had to be recast. It's kind of an odd animal. So the clock would be shut down for a while. Uh, when the deputy sheriff, Wally Davis, was killed, you might remember the clock was stopped at 1.37, the time he was killed. On the memorial to Wally, so all four faces were stopped for a week. The governor built his remarks around that. And then the, the uh, hands on the outside originally were hand-carved cedar, now they're aluminum. These wooden shafts are original, but somebody ran over to Twain during one of the restorations and put these downspouts on there to keep the old wood going. So basically, the, the clock has a lot of integrity as far as original parts and all. Downspouts. Yeah, this aluminum gutter piece, downspout. Oh, that's what they're okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. They probably charge that's like that with the high price deal. Hey, they got, they've got everything. Oh, yeah, well, they've got everything. <laughs> so, any questions? Is there a lightning rod on this? You know, I don't know if people have asked me that. There's a cable, I'm not sure where it is. There, there's a grounding cable from something up there. Mm -hmm. And the parapet parts around the top are zinc and sheet metal. And I don't know if they would connect it. I don't remember seeing anything sticking up huh. as a classic old-time lightning rod. Yeah. So in answer to your question, I don't know. But there are those metal parts that would conduct something. And then the odd, the oddest thing about the whole clock mechanism is the bell. It's an exterior hammer. So you probably, when you hear it around town, it's not a very sharp, crisp bell. It's a dull thud. It's probably good. It doesn't wake up the town like some sharp old New England communities have real sharp bells. So this is an exterior hammer. And when clock people have asked, hey, can we see your bell? Sure. You know, they get all excited about these things. They want to see an exterior hammer. Big deal for those kind of folks. So they want to go up the ladder. The bell's 
about a 2,000 pound bell and he hoisted it up through this opening, supposedly with a horse team and a bunch of pulleys, in 1914. He heard it for it in a high school. Oh. <laughs> yeah, on a still night, you can pretty much hear it all over town. Yeah. That was the one that went up right. here, yeah. Okay, so any questions? If not, that's the end of the tour.